thank you. Very happy to speak to all of you today. My name is David Liu, and I'm head of ML and Signal Platforms. The work I'm sharing today, though, is the collaboration of dozens of teams at Pinterest. So today, we're going to talk about how we've grown and eventually unified ML platforms over time. I'll introduce ML at Pinterest, talk about our layered approach to unifying machine learning, and then touch on some of the challenges that we've seen. So Pinterest is a visual discovery engine where people save and organize their ideas or pins into collections called boards. It covers a range of use cases like food, fashion, DIY, and decor. And of course, we operate at web scale with hundreds of billions of pins. So we have a really diverse set of ML applications actually, which can be roughly categorized as large scale online ranking and small to medium scale use cases. Large scale ranking is the most obvious class of ML on Pinterest. Anytime you see a grid of pins, like on the home feed, search, or related pins, we had to rank thousands of items behind the scenes to show the users the best ones within 100 milliseconds or so. So the scale is tens of millions of items every second. And this has very large uh, infrastructure challenges. The other category is what we call small to medium scale machine learning. By most standards, these are still pretty large data sets, but the inference demands are a bit smaller. So every time a user takes an action, we need to perform a single inference. So this is used for things like image analysis, detecting suspicious logins, or extracting the subject matter of a pin. So the problem that we saw over time was that each team had independently evolved specific solutions for creating features and serving models. This led to a lot of custom infrastructure for each use case with a large maintenance cost and incomplete tooling. So our huge task was to unify these different use cases into a common infrastructure. One of the most important things that we learned was the approach to unification. We had to build a series of layers where each layer provided a foundation and standardized interface for the next. We started with unifying the feature representation and that gave us a foundation for a common feature store. In turn, that enabled common inference and deployment solutions, and then model insights, analysis, and monitoring tools. So let's look at the feature representation first. Previously, each team had to prepare its own raw data in these custom and highly nested thrift structures, but there's no standardization. This meant that each team had complex decoding logic inside their models. And it blocked teams from sharing features as well. The approach we proposed was to define a standard container for storing features, which would be general enough for any kind of data. We separated uh, the notion of, of data type or the physical storage format from the feature type, which is what that data represents. For example, the storage type could be a vector of ints, but those ints could represent either different dimensions of a dense numeric vector or it could be a multi-categorical feature. So this feature representation greatly simplified the models because now we can provide well-defined conversions into the inputs for uh, standard models like TensorFlow and PyTorch. This eliminates all of that custom parsing logic. Once we had the feature representation, the next logical step was to have a shared feature store. So we organized the features as a layered key value store where we can get features using an entity type, a key, and feature IDs. So for example, a user with a given ID, and then we can retrieve a feature that provides the country of that user. This standardized store is a foundation for many downstream tools. And one of the most valuable was being able to backfill previously collected training data. Uh, previously, ML engineers commonly logged new features for several weeks in production in order to gather new training data sets. But a standard feature format and a shared store means they can start doing modeling experiments entirely offline and save weeks per iteration. The feature store also enables standardized inference, since the framework can now fetch these standard features and pass them into the models. And we built a feature catalog called Feature Hub, which I'll show you next. Feature Hub is our self-serve UI, and it enables users to do a lot of common tasks. They can browse and view all the metadata about the features. They can see which models use a feature, look up the value of the feature, 
and they can see whether it's available online. Uh, they can even see coverage and distribution stats about those features. There's a whole lot more functionality that we plan to add in the future. Now, one of the technologies underlying our feature store is our in-house signal platform called Galaxy. It's a standardized way for, user, uh, for teams to share data sets with each other. Uh, and it's actually used for any sort of key value data about Pinterest entities, like pins, users, ads, and so on. But it's also a very convenient managed experience so that users can simply provide some business logic and configuration. And then we handle the scheduling of their and execution of their workflow, storing and serving that data. So with this feature store, we began to build standard inference and deployment uh, components. We use the open source ML flow uh, for the standard model artifact format as well as a model registry. And this gives us a standard way to track our models. We then have our own ML deploy and inference services built around the ML flow and the feature store. One interesting architectural choice here is that in order to support the breadth of different use cases, we actually have multiple ways to deploy models. They're all built around our uh, shared core inference engine called Scorpion Model Server. And the simplest deployment is to call it as a standalone service that does inference directly. This is really easy to set up for the smaller scale use cases. The other options can handle larger scale. So the first is embedding the model server component directly inside another C++ process, for example, inside our search index servers. So this achieves higher performance without an incurring network transfer to gather features. The third option is to call our full service that performs feature fetching, caching, and scoring. The client just has to tell us which entities they're trying to score, and we'll fetch the features from our shared store automatically. And each request often spans thousands of items, so we actually fan out the work. And the machines form this sharded cache that maximizes the data locality and enables us to score tens of millions of items per second. Once all these use cases are on shared feature format models and inference approaches, it then becomes possible to build even more general shared tooling. So we're still relatively early in some of these, but we have things like real-time feature distribution, coverage monitoring, feature importance analysis, and model rollout monitoring. So now that we've seen this layered unification roadmap, let's discuss some of the challenges that we faced on the way. So it seems pretty simple to draw this idealized layer by layer approach now, but there's actually a huge inertia to existing systems. And it's pretty hard to get everyone to move onto this new system. First, product teams are usually under a lot of pressure to achieve their own business goals. And platform work will often require a short-term pause in order to go faster in the long run. Second, when we talk to people and ask them what they want, they often request these hyper-specific fixes to the current system. And this makes sense from their point of view because it might be the shortest edit distance solution to solve a particular pain point that they're having. But these factors mean you can end up in a local optima where it's not really possible to improve the overall platform without undergoing some temporary productivity hits. So it can take some real concerted effort to work towards a more ambitious general solution. So we figured out some approaches for these challenges. First, we need to figure out a technical path to have a shared foundation and have a step-by-step -step approach to migrating into this unified ecosystem. But this uh, technical foundation is not enough. So we need various organizational approaches to make the migrations happen. Uh, first, when the immediate pain points are big enough, a bottom-up approach can actually work really well. Teams will have a strong incentives uh, incentive, for example, to save several weeks with each iteration uh, if they are able to backfill their features, or they can begin sharing features from other teams. Uh, but at some point, it's also necessary to have this top-down alignment to escape the local optima, especially for the teams that are under the most intense business pressure. Leaders need to explicitly prioritize platform goals to give teams uh, the room they need in order to pay down the technical debt of 
uh, non-standardized infrastructure. Overall, we've made tremendous progress in this journey towards platform unification over the past several years. And I only had time to talk about a few of the projects we've done, but it was a pleasure to share these highlights with you today. Thanks.